super fun stuff. Growing up, one of my all-time favorite movies was Space Jam. It had all the Looney Tunes characters and the best basketball player of all time, Michael Jordan. I still like this movie even to this day. So I decided how awesome would it be to have a piece of the movie. There's a ton of Looney Tunes stuff out there already, but you never see any love for the Nerdlucks. The Nerdlucks are the small aliens that turn into the Monstars later. Most people call them the Monstars, but technically they're only the Monstars when they're big and scary basketball players. The Nerdluck leader is named Pound. He is a larger hunched orange alien. Well, I thought maybe it would be cool to make a Nerdluck. Looking online, there are no models for them whatsoever. The closest thing that there was were the toys that were made in the 90s. Hesitant at first, I decide to try to model Pound and see how it turns out. The first thing I do is find a reference picture that I will use to make my model. I decide to use the classic Nerdluck scene where they just shot at Bugs Bunny with their lasers. It's a pretty memorable shot and a great pose. Hold on there, Mr. Looney Tune. Hey, what do you think we are, stupid? Don't move a muscle. Okay, Bunny, gather up your tune pals. We're taking you for a ride. Using this reference picture, I make a basic outline in Tinkercad. I take the primitive shapes available and give a basic outline to his body. Obviously, this doesn't look all that great. It's super rough, and even though painting can do wonders with the basic model, it's still not going to look good. I wanted more. I wanted a real come-to-life nerd look. There are a lot of options to choose from when making an organic 3D model. One of my preferred modeling tools is called Sculptress. I find this tool super easy to use, quick to adjust settings, and best of all, free. Minus any ZBrush tools you decide to use. But I'm cheap and I have none of those. So when you start Sculptress, you get a 3D clay ball in the middle of your screen with symmetry settings on. When you first model head, I always recommend you keep symmetry on to get a perfectly symmetrical features. Later I will turn off symmetry and slightly modify areas to give a more lifelike appearance. Starting with the head, I create a basic sculpt out of the ball of clay. If you notice, I do not sculpt the eyes from this piece. Instead, I add two more symmetrical clay balls and place them in the general area where the eyes will go. I try to shape the clay balls into more of an oval shape because that is how they look in my reference picture. After I eventually get my eyes in place, I start to sculpt around them. To get the shapes that I want, I keep looking at my reference picture. Here you can see that I'm working on the brows and the nose. I will also add the bags underneath his eyes. Out of the box, Sculptors offers you a variety of tools. Out of these tools, I really only use a very small subset. The tool I use the most out of any other ones is called the grab tool. The grab tool is kind of like an all-purpose move tool. You can stretch things any which way, and I think it offers the most flexibility from all the Every tool has a size and strength attribute attached to it. This allows you to fine tune the tool. The grab tool also has a global toggle. This turns into a move tool instead. The other tools I like are smooth, draw, and crevice, which are all used on a need by basis. Smooth smooths areas of the model, but it'll also shrink your areas, so you really need to be careful of your strength. Draw adds clay to the model, meaning it creates more triangles and can sometimes be tricky to get it just right. Usually if I use the draw tool, I'll purposely overdraw, then use the smooth tool to reduce and make a nice surface. The crevice tool lets you draw engraved lines on the clay, which is helpful at times, but any shakiness with your mouse is very noticeable. Again, the smooth tool is often used after the crevice tool. Other tools like rotate and scale, I only use on a global level to arrange my pieces properly. The next toolbox down, there are some supplementary tools like the symmetry toggle that I talked about before. There's also reduce selected, which will reduce the underlying complexity of the model, or subdivide, that creates more triangles for more detail. The last section is for adding more models or planes, importing, exporting, and saving. That's about it for a quick tutorial on the tools that I use in sculptures. With the Nerdluck head, I am happy with the progress I made and decide it's time to turn off symmetry. This allows me to modify any area separately from the rest of the sculpt. When you turn off symmetry, it will make all objects in Sculptress asymmetrical. You cannot pick and choose objects. So make sure you are ready to do this before committing. You do have the ability to turn symmetry back on, but what they do is copy one half of the sculpt to the other half. It sometimes looks kind of weird, but if you need it, it's there. In the reference picture, his brows are different heights. His right brow is more open and his left brow is more closed. So with my trusty grab tool, I change each brow to roughly the sizes that I want. 
I also changed the mouth, nose, and chin a little bit to give it more of an organic feel. The sides of his mouth I changed to give him a more of a smirky look. After making little change by little change, I get my head how I like it. I purposely do not sculpt the antenna because I know they're too small to print well on my 3D printer. Also, never add indentions for his eyes. Eyes are always smooth and in my opinion look better painted on. I take the head I sculpted and export it into an object file. Then I import that into Tinkercad. I place the sculpted head on my basic body that I made earlier. So when you import into Tinkercad from Sculptures, I notice that the model gets reduced automatically and kinda looks pretty bad. But we aren't using Tinkercad for his body anyways, this is just to see how he looks. After looking at the model on the body, I come to the conclusion that his face is too skinny and tall. So back to Sculptures I go to make necessary changes. With the grab tool, I will make his face fatter, which looks more like my reference picture. I re-import the sculpted head I made into Tinkercad to see how it looks. And bingo, that's the right size. Next step, the body. I make his body using Sculptures. I add a clay ball and align it under his head. I use my trusty grab tool to make the ball bigger to give him the big pot belly. Since I added the body as a separate object, Sculptures will treat it as a separate entity, so I won't accidentally make changes to his head when I modify the body. The highlighted part will always show you which one you're currently changing. After a while of messing with his body, I proceed to add his feet. I add two separate spheres for each of his feet and put them in the general area I think they should go. I then sculpt the feet into the two-toed foot that he has. For this, I had to look up a few other pictures to make sure what his foot looked like. Thank you, Google. After sculpting his feet, I add the body folds over them. To be honest, it took me a while to get the folds just right. I found a similar problem with the feet, mainly because my reference pictures didn't show enough detail. Eventually, I get them about how I want them. Because this model will sit on a flat surface, I decide to add a plane. This plane is just a reference to where the ground will be. One problem with sculptors is it's not designed to do slicing or straight corners very easily, at least with the free version with no Z brushes. Good thing though, other tools like Mesh Mixer, which I will use later, makes it super simple. So now to the hard parts, the arms. The main problem with the arms is a lack of detail in my reference picture. Pound's right arm is behind his back, so I have no idea what his hand is doing, so I have to take an educated guess. The other arm is pointing upward with a giant gun. Well, I haven't modeled a gun yet, so I'll have to do that soon. So first I decide to look at his right arm. The good thing about his right arm is that it's not protruding from the character. The reason this is a good thing is that it's way easier to 3D print. Any overhangs like arms sticking out require supports, and more supports usually require more cleanup. Plus his arms are very thin, which also poses a higher risk of breaking. I decided to model the arm from the body object. I could have added a separate object to the model, but sometimes this gives too much of a detached look. For instance, the head of Pound is supposed to be noticeably different from the body, but the arms just kind of blend in. To be honest, either way is fine. It's kind of up to you. With the arm, I decided to give him a behind the back fist that kind of pushes into his lower back. It's kind of like a nobleman showing off his large gun with a big attitude. Next I draw his bow tie. Again I could use another new object, but I decided just to add it to the body since it was very small. The draw tool mixed with the smooth tool, plus the grab tool is what I use to draw the bow. This is probably one of the more easier parts on his body. However, I did spend a lot of time on this to get as close to my reference picture as possible. The only thing left now is his left arm and his weapon. Since Sculptors is more designed for organic type of things, making his gun in this tool is kind of a bad idea. However, Tinkercad is great for these kinds of things. So on the Tinkercad, I start to design the gun using primitives and community shapes. Not taking too much time, I finish the gun and try to put it into Sculptors. And bam, I'm hit with a big problem. Sculptors throws an error saying too many connections to a vertex. You're probably wondering what this means. Well, it's quite simple actually. Here is an example of a cylinder and the differences between each tool. As you can see with the circle sections of the cylinder, Tinkercad will place a single point in the middle and extend vertices out from that point. Sculptors, however, will add multiple points in the middle, basically making more of a grid-like structure. And this will actually reduce the number of vertices from one point. So unfortunately, Sculptors will not import this model. So I decided to sculpt out the arm and the hand without the gun. Later I plan to use Mesh Mixer, which I can import Pound and the gun, plus make any small changes. Mesh Mixer offers similar tools to Sculptors that will allow me to modify his hand to fit the gun properly. 
but first I sculpted the left arm and saved the model. Before you save the model, remember I added a plane for reference. Now is a good time to delete that plane so it doesn't show up when I import into MeshMixer. MeshMixer is a great free tool that allows you to create, modify, and fix 3D models with a lot of automated processes. So now I will import both Pound and his gun into the frame. I size and move the gun where I think it should be. As you can see, the gun overlaps the section of his fingers and it isn't quite right. Using the sculpting tools in MeshMixer, I can modify the fingers to wrap around the handle. Before I can use this model, I will need to merge both the gun and pound together into the same object. This is done by selecting all your objects, then in the Edit tab, selecting Combine. Now I put the model in my 3D printer slicer program called Simplify 3D. A slicing program like Simplify generates all the needed code for your printer as well as showing you every step of the printing process. This way you can ensure that it will print properly. It also allows you to generate supports and other useful 3D printing items. Once I get my settings right, I look at how the model will print. And, uh-oh, it isn't looking good. There are multiple voids in my model. So what happened is that when I created Pound and Sculptures, I used different objects. Well, Sculptures did a bad job of merging those together, and it created empty void pockets in my model. Not only that, it created small separations between each of the objects. Luckily, Mesh Mixer will save the day. First, let me show you how different objects are causing the problem. If I make everything hollow, you can see the different objects that compose Pound. Here we see that the head and body overlap. What happens is that overlapped section becomes an empty void when it goes into the slicing program. This is definitely not what we want. To solve this issue, I will need to make everything a solid. I go to Edit and then Make Solid. I choose a solid type of accurate and increase both the solid accuracy and mesh density to as high as they go. Hit update and then accept, and that's it. All fixed. You can see here that it seams together some of the gaps and the entire model is now one object. So now I print Pound out, and using similar painting steps from my previous videos, I finish Pound. And he turned out way better than I thought. I was hesitant to model him at first, but I'm happy I went for it. This was a good lesson of always trying your best and trying new things. Basically, just do it. You don't know if you can't do something until you try, but you already failed if you don't. Looking at my reference picture, you can see he looks pretty spot on. The only thing I did not print was his antenna. For those, I bent some paper clips and painted them. They are rigid and only took about 5 minutes to do. And that's it. Pound is done. And he can be added to my collection of fun stuff. He's so cute and mean. Hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of how I designed the Nerd Luck Pound from the movie Space Jam. Let me know how you like this video and what projects I should try in the future. I'm always open for suggestions. Thanks. You can touch his tummy. You gotta make a wish. Um, I wish for a Barbie and Fang for Christmas. Good job.